Hashimoto's. You were misquoted a, a, a while back. Um, and can me, can you maybe explain why everyone is so fearful of taking iodine if they have Hashimoto's? Well, all right. So if you Google me, you'll find a quote where I said, uh, uh, Hashimoto's patient taking iodine is like pouring fuel on the fire. I wasn't misquoted. That's what I said. That was the first 10 years of my practice, and I didn't know about iodine. Once I learned about iodine, um, I didn't have to recant it. I just was I was ignorant at the time. I wasn't iodine literate at the time. Um, you know, there, there's a big myth out there that Hashimoto's is caused by iodine. And it, the myth is out in conventional medicine. And unfortunately, the myth is out there in holistic medicine, particularly in the naturopathic world. And there's some big voices out there who've been saying this for years. However, I can dispel the myth very quickly. And I'll ask you the question, Sarah. Over the last 50 years, have iodine levels gone up or down across the United States? Down. 50% down, according to the NHANES data. Over the last 50 years, has Hashimoto's gone up or down? Significantly up. One's gone down, one's gone up. This is called a negative association. A negative association disproves causation. That disprove that what we just said disproves iodine is causing Hashimoto's. Now we can discuss what causes Hashimoto's, and maybe it's maybe it's more TVs in the house or more cars in the driveway or something. But my premise has been you, you Hashimoto's forms from low iodine. Hashimoto's is treated with iodine. I've got case history after case history, including two daughters who I treated this way. We had Hashimoto's as young teenagers and don't do not now as young ladies. Um and I got patient after patient after patient. So that's just that's just nonsense. I described that in my both my thyroid book and my iodine books.